Okay, I want to do the structure of the nervous system here as the first video in the neurobiology series because there's some terms that I want to define that are going to um, help us in this process and help us to kind of communicate throughout this uh, these introductions here. Um, there's some things you need to know, some basic terminology in order to describe the nervous system. So let's get right into them. And there are two types. There are two general types of cells in the vertebrae nervous system, and that's nerve cells or neurons, they're also called neurons, and glial cells or glia is another term that you'll hear. Um, in, humor, in humans there is an estimated 100 billion to 1 trillion neurons, so that's a, think about that for a second, that's a whole lot of um, neurons. So. And each neuron consists of four parts. The cell body, or soma, it consists of the main functional organelles of the cell, so that's like the nucleus and all, and mitochondria and things along those lines. Um, you'll find a nucleus in the, in the um, cell body. Um, the, the second part is the dendrites. The dendrites are like outgrowths from the cell body, and they are they receive signals coming into the cell, or coming into the cell. Um, so. They'll be receiving signals from other neurons or, or different parts of the body, different sensory systems, you know, allowing you to make, allowing the body to make adjustments. Um, so the next part is the axon, which conducts electrical signals away from the body. So that's going to be your way of sending a signal. The axon is the part that actually sends the signal to another neuron or to the brain. Um, which conducts electrical signals away from the body and has an axon hillock. Now the axon hillock is a small structure, it's located very close to the um, cell body and it's easily excited. So it's, you know, change, small changes in membrane potential are going to change the uh, activity there. So the axon hillock is a place where you might have a lot of, um, where you might have a lot of uh, connections from other neurons at that spot because it's a that's a spot where you're going to have a great effect on getting that uh, that cell body or getting that that neuron to fire an action potential. So the other part here is the presynaptic terminal which secretes neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft which binds to receptors on a postsynaptic terminal. So a synapse is like a clasp and I was drawing this before and I I don't know if that's a great drawing of it, but anyway, this would be your presynaptic terminal. It has these like little vesicles in here which are filled with neurotransmitter, okay? And what they do is they release neurotransmitter, you know, I'm just going to use dots here, into this what's known as the synaptic cleft. And here is your postsynaptic terminal. This is just a very rough drawing, and then I'll draw these little what look like Ys, but uh, what those are essentially are supposed to represent is receptors for this neurotransmitter. So this part right here is the synaptic cleft, okay? This is the postsynaptic terminal, this is the presynaptic terminal, and this is neurotransmitter being released in here. So the next thing I want to talk about is the olig oligodendrocytes, which are located in the central nervous system. And they have a complement in the peripheral nervous system, which are called Schwann cells. Okay, and what they do is they wrap the axon in a sheath of myelin. And what a she what this sheath of myelin basically does is it insulates the axon. And by and just like the insulation on a wire, copper wire in your house, um, the same principle applies. The insulation on the axon increases the rate of electrical conduction, so it speeds up the this, this it speeds up the transmission which is extremely important because we could say how could we get sensor you know this sensory information from say our fingertips when touching something how do you transmit that information rapidly or almost almost what feels instantaneous although it's not instantaneous there is some time that it's usually in the in the um, area of milliseconds though so very very short amounts of time for the conduction um, so which essentially insulates the there are small gaps between the myelinated portions of the axon uh, where the axonal membrane is exposed to the extracellular fluid. And these gaps are just called, I would call them nodes of Ranavir, or, or, you know, I don't even know exactly how you pronounce it. But anyway, the bottom line is he's the guy who discovered it, and um, so he gets credit in his name for these um, nodes or gaps between the um, gaps between the myelinated and on my myelinated 
portions. Now, what I want to show here is just, this is your typical cartoon drawing of a neuron. Um, I just take this off the internet, and first we'll start with what we talked about at the beginning. We said there's a cell body. Okay, so here's the cell body, and here's what it looks like. And as you can see, here's the organelles, and here's the nucleus that I was talking about before. Then we talk about the dendrites that receive information, that receive signals from other, from other neurons. And these are these little outgrowths. They look like tree branches, essentially, from the cell body. Okay. And as we move down here, we see we have myelin sheetha. So that's exactly what I was talking about before. This is the myelin being wrapped around the axon. And you can see the nodes here. They get the nodes labeled. Each one of these is a node in between. So those, node, those nodes over here um, are exposed to extracellular fluid, okay? They're not, they're not covered by the, myel, by the myelin. Um, and then we can see the axon. The axon is actually the part that's exposed to the extracellular fluid in these nodes. And Schwann cells, okay, they, are, they make the myelin here, okay? And these are axon terminals. So over here is where you're going to have... Um, you know, postsynaptic, presynaptic terminals in this area over here. Okay, so that's the basic drawing. I just want to say a couple more things here about the vertebrae spinal cord. That should say, okay, the vertebrae spinal cord is the central connective point between the central nervous system, neurons in the brain, and the spinal cord. The central nervous system, remember, the central nervous system consists of neurons in the brain and the spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system, which are the neurons that are partially or fully outside the brain or spinal cord. Okay, they're partially or fully outside the brain or spinal cord. A cross-section of the spinal cord can be divided into two regions. The exterior consists of white matter, so mostly myelinated axons. And the central region consists of, is, I should say consists of, gray matter that um, certain that contain the cell bodies or motor neurons so the central region consists of gray matter that contains the cell bodies or motor neurons the peripheral nervous system has many parts one is the sensory system which collects information about the body so you know those are things like hearing light touch etc um, sensory systems you know, you're familiar with those I'm sure and the other part is the autonomic nervous system, which consists of different motor neurons that function without us being consciously aware of their operation. So there's the all kinds of things, processes going on in the body, you know, digestion and the muscles involved in there, in the, in the stomach and intestines, that you don't even realize they're firing. There's no conscious involvement in your, um, in, in no thought process in firing those neurons. So... That's pretty much what I wanted to cover for the introductory video here. I'm going to come back with a lot more detail.